dear friends, today we celebrate the double feast of our Blessed Mother assumed into heaven and of our country's Independence Day. Mary's assumption into heaven is a celebration of her freedom from sin and death. This freedom of Mary, to which we all aspire, is fundamentally a gift of God. However, the assumption is a reflection of an equally important freedom that Mary possessed thanks to the courage she had to surrender her life totally into the hands of our loving God. The freedom from self ovation and selfishness that manifests itself in seeking to do God's will above all else and in serving one's sisters and brothers in love and generosity of heart. Even though it is 73 years since India gained it, its independence from the British, we have to admit that we are far from being truly free. We have made much progress over these years thanks to the selfless dedication, large-heartedness and commitment of innumerable people who have served this nation, especially the poor and downtrodden among our people. But there is still a mountain to climb, and when we look at the challenge before us, we may be tempted to get discouraged. Complaining and self-pity helps no one. Instead, we need to look at ourselves honestly and ask ourselves, what can we do? What can I do to contribute the freedom our nation? On this special day, let us ask the Lord through the intercession of our Blessed Mother assumed into heaven that we may respond to his call to reach out to our fellow countrymen and women, especially the young and the destitute, the poor and the marginalized. Let us live in the confidence that the Lord is with us. May this assurance that he gives us of his presence gives us the courage to reach out to those in need without any fear. Let us ask the Lord through the intercession of Mary for the gift of true freedom for ourselves and our fellow countrymen and women. And friends, then, hymn number 24. Hymn number 24.
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Dear fathers and brothers, dear boys, and all the viewers of this Holy Eucharist, Today, the Church invites us to celebrate the solemnity of Ascension of our Blessed Mother into Heaven. And it is the Feast of our Blessed Mother. It's not only about her, rather it is about each one of us doing God's will in our lives and finding our place in Heaven. Today also is our privilege and proud to be Indian and to pray for our country that a country may continue to bear good fruit in this world, especially in this pandemic situation. Let's pray that all of us may take responsibility to work towards better India. We also have Tony here with us. He celebrates his birthday. Let's pray for Tony and all his intention. He's been with us for a number of years. And we do not know exactly what his age. That is also the right attitude to begin with, without knowing and being happy with whatever we have. As we come together this morning, let us pause and ask God's pardon and forgiveness for the times that we fail to radiate God's love, mercy, and compassion to others. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, to my fault, to my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, O Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Hymn number 461. Hymn number 461. Thank you. 
Almighty ever living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns within the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened, and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon, and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labor, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky, a huge red dragon, which had seven heads and seven and ten horns, and each of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them to the earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child so that he would eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter, and the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety for her. Then I heard a voice shout from heaven, Victory and power and empire forever have been won by our God and all authority for his Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. In number 67, in number 67, Oh 
second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ. But all of them in their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet, and the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. For everything is to be put under his feet. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Hymn number 114. Hymn number 114. Of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants 
forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. When we have a mass like this online, there's a little bit of not a confusion. Maybe most mind, mind, the mind is there to look. The people are very less. Whether look at the people here, or look at the camera, or look above, or look down. If you are nervous, so that was the time when I, a priest asked uh, the other priest. He said, "Don't look anywhere. Look at your watch and preach, so that it is on time." So this is also a reminder for me that I need to be short and sweet and explaining rather reflecting on the important feast that we celebrate today. In the 19th century when our Blessed Mother appeared to Benedict and after which people had gone to the little girl and asked, okay, how do that lady look like? Can you explain to us, can you tell us and that they brought a lot of pictures of a blessed mother been drawn by the world famous artist but she says this is not the one, this is not the one, this is not the one, that is not Then in a silence of art she started murmuring, why do they minimize your beauty of mother? They started minimizing the beauty of our blessed mother by showing the various pictures. Another example came to my mind as I was thinking of the, today's reflection, the Taj Mahal, a love song in marble, which built in 1645. Same sentiment comes today, the Almighty has done great things for me. That is the greatest love song that we are celebrating. God has done great things in the life of our Blessed Mother. And that is the wonderful feast that we are celebrating today, the solemnity, ascension of our Blessed Mother into heaven with body and soul, which is the dogma of Catholic faith. On 1st November 1950, Pope Pius XII, making this proclamation officially what it has been for centuries, a belief made it public. And from that time, even earlier, believed that Mary had a unique relationship with Jesus. Mary had a unique share in the glory of God and Jesus. And she had a unique role in the salvation history. Therefore, God preserved her from the very beginning for this great responsibility preserved her from original sin to bring, to carry a Lord into the world. This privilege was given to her so that she would, would be taken into heaven, body and soul. The Almighty has done great things for me. Yes, she is a new Eve who closely associated with new Adam. Christ, who is our Savior and Redeemer, whom she brought forth into this world. Therefore, we believe she assumed into heaven with our body and soul, in our total human personhood, in communion with Christ, in his risen humanity. In the first reading of today, very clearly gives a glimpse of Mary's glorious life. A woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon with 12 stars on her head as a crown. The glorious image of Mary assumed into heaven as a queen of heaven and earth. Therefore, we believe and accept after her earthly life finished, she was taken up into heaven 
with body and soul, she was taken up into heaven with a glory, where she exalted as a queen of heaven and earth. As we travel on this earth, earthly pilgrimage, we look up to Mary, our mother, as a sign of hope and comfort, which clearly St. Paul gives us in today's reading, in the second reading. All will be brought to life in Christ. However, each one in his own time. Because we all are belong to Christ. We all are share his risen life. Our hope is that we will be with him one day. The letter G not only invites us or gives us hope about ultimate destiny being beyond this earthly life with him, but also gives us hope in our struggle to live our life as a true disciples, as a true citizens of our country. Where we hear today in the gospel, Mary portrayed visiting our cousin Elizabeth in our need. She sets out on a journey to visit who is in need. She stays with her for three months, reaches out to her. In today's time, in this pandemic situation, all our movements are restricted. All our advice to stay at home. Mary stayed three months, we are staying four months and plus go on. And we are asked to maintain social distance. But the need is great to reach out in this situation. The struggle is more. The pain is unbearable. The jealousy, the hatred, the corruption unimaginable. And the difference in the name of religion, language, and the injustice that we experience, and the list goes on. Therefore, dear friends and dear fathers and brothers, as we celebrate the solemnity of Ascension, as we celebrate our freedom, the Independence Day, the message is clear for you and me. Mary's Ascension gives us assurance and hope that our own body will be resurrected, assumed into heaven on the final judgment day. It is the sign that we will be with our Creator one day in our own time. Secondly, the feast invites us to believe that Mary's ascension was a reward for a saintly life. Thus, which reminds us that we should be pure in our body and soul. Since Paul urges us, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, and we are the members of the body of Christ the Church. And thirdly, the feast gives us the message of liberation. That is what we celebrate today in India. Gospel of John 8, 34, everyone who sin is slave to sin, but Paul assures us, encourages in Galatians 5, 1, Christ has set us free by dying on the cross. We are free. Are we free from within and in and around where we live? Thus, this speech once again inviting us to experience this liberation. Spiritually, are we liberated from impurity, injustice, uncharitable or bad habits that we hold on to? In the worldly, are we free from hatred, jealousy, corruption, bondage, religious fundamentalism and etc. As we celebrate this feast, ask our Blessed Mother to be our guide to be our hope, to be our strength, as she was privileged to be preserved for a mission because of which she experienced 
the heavenly glory. We too be as Indians called to be proud to be Indians, preserve the rich heritage and culture, the language that we have, and to pray for those people who fought for it and fight to be a good example to people where we work, to whom we encounter in society in which we live, to bear witness for this risen Christ and this glorious Blessed Mother that we may bring once again heaven on earth and we may be in heaven one day as a resurrected people. Let's continue to pray for this grace that we may be proud Indians and honest citizens preserving, enjoying the graces all that we have. May our Blessed Mother continue to bless each one of us, bless our country and bless all our intentions that we may do God's will and say along with our Blessed Mother, the Almighty has done great things for me and for my country. God bless. Let's all stand. Profess of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and was crucified, was crucified by dying and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From the day will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last thing. Amen. Assumption of Mary into heaven is an important Marian feast. Mary's guest to God's will turned out to be a rich blessing to all humanity, for she has brought forth the world with Saviour. Mary stands for freedom and wants all peoples to be free. Let us place our petitions before the Lord, saying, Lord, help us to respond to your call. Lord, Lord help us to respond to your call. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that in imitation of Mary, they may cooperate with God's grace to remove inequalities and injustice from the world. We pray, Lord, help Lord, us to respond to your call. For women activists who work for women's and other humanitarian causes, that their efforts to bring about transformation in society may be appreciated and rewarded. We pray. Lord, Lord help us to respond to your call. For innocent people who are unlawfully confined in prisons, that in their loss of freedom and independence, they may find consolation in God, who suffers with the suffering. We pray. Lord, help us to respond to your call. That our motherland, becoming an independent and sovereign country, on the feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Mother, is a happy coincidence. Let us pray that all citizens of India may work, believe and move about in the country without hindrance of any sort. We pray. Lord, help us to respond to your call. For the members of our school community and all of us present in this Eucharistic Assembly, that in the celebration of the Feast of the Assumption, we may truly appreciate the freedom Christ has won for us, that we enjoy peace and safety 
in these difficult times, and that she and the Lord may continue to show us the way to reach out and reach our eternal destination. We pray. Lord, Lord help us to respond to your call. Let's pause and pray for personal or community needs. Let's remember those people who are affected by this pandemic situation. And those people who are asked of our prayers, to whom we have promised our prayers. God in his goodness may grant all your hearts desire. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Offered to him, him number 138, him number 138.
indeed holy o lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son o lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and the blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate this mystery for the night he was betrayed he himself took the bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread gave it to his disciples saying take this for all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you the similar way when the supper was said he took the chalice and giving you thanks he said the blessing he gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith by whose death you will to reconcile to yourself grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his holy spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse with your blessed apostles and good glorious martyrs with saint john bosco saint dominic savio and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help may this sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray o lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant francis our pope and oswald our bishop the order of bishops all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion o merciful father gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life give kind admittance to your kingdom that we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our lord through whom you bestow on the world all that is good Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. 
same faith and trust in our Heavenly Father. Let's pray to Him, the prayer Jesus Himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say a word, and my soul shall be healed. Take now the act of consecration of the Archdiocese of Bombay to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. O Mary, choice daughter of God the Father, Mother of Jesus and spouse of the Holy Spirit, we joyfully greet you on the feast day of your glorious Assumption into heaven and come before you on the anniversary of our nation's independence. To consecrate ourselves and our archdiocese to your immaculate heart. In your hands, O Mother of the Church, we lovingly entrust all our bishops, and in a special way, those who have the grave responsibility of shepherding the flock entrusted to their spiritual care. We commend to you the priests and the religious men and women who with prayer and apostolic words 
sustain the pastoral trust of our archdiocese, as well as our seminarians and novices who are preparing themselves for service in your son's vineyard. We consecrate to you all our families, the parents, the children, and the youth, with the many challenges they are facing each day, to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, and all our friends and benefactors, we lift up to you, O Mother of all mercy and compassion, the broken families and the last Catholics in our archdiocese, our sick, poor, aged, and lonely brethren, and all those who in any way are being discriminated against or are being denied their human rights and liberties. We confidently place under your eternal protection all our parishes, small Christian communities, associations, and institutions, our schools and colleges, our hospitals and clinics, and our homes for the aged, the abandoned, the disabled, and the dying. O Mother of all mankind, we pray for the spiritual and political leaders of our nation. Give them a world vision where moral and ethical values have an important place and priority and a determination to work selflessly for the common good of our country and its people. We remember also our sisters and brothers of our faiths and denominations. Help us all to live as loyal citizens, united under the same national banner and as children of the loving Father who is in heaven. We recommend to you in a special way those who misunderstand, ill-treat, or persecute us. Teach us to forgive them, for they know not what they do. Most Holy Mary, Mediatrix of all graces, intercede for our beloved motherland before the throne of Almighty God, that his peace may reign on our national frontiers, that the people of India may live in harmony within the diversity of their cultures, customs and beliefs, and that many may be led to acknowledge as their personal Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. My dear teachers, my dear students, my dear members of the Salvation family, and all those participating in this morning's Holy Eucharist, we must remember today what Tagore, Rabindranath Tagore, definitely defines this freedom that we have, that we make our own once again. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards freedom, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of death habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that haven of freedom, my father, let my country away. May Mary help us in attaining this lofty goal of freedom for all. I want to wish in a very special way a very happy feast of Our Lady's Assumption and the 74th Independence Day, dear friends. Have a lovely day and a great week ahead. God bless you all immensely. All generation will call me blessed for he who is mighty has done great things for me. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of our blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's bow and your blessings. May God, who through the childbearing of Blessed Virgin Mary, build 
in his great kindness to redeem the human race be pleased to enrich you with his blessing amen, amen. may you know always and everywhere the protection of our blessed mother through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life amen, amen. may you who are devoutly gathered on this day on feast of assumption carry away with you the blessing the gift of spiritual joy and heavenly rewards amen, amen. the lord be with you and, and with your spirit may the blessing of almighty god the father the son and the holy spirit come down upon you and remain with you always amen, amen. go forth the mass is ended thanks be to the lord in number 427 in number 427 Bless our country, Lord God of our might. Bless our India today. We are children of a people so in love with you. Let that love not fade away. Down in the forest where the trees are whispering, our sages sat down to pray. Bless our God. 